Hi, and welcome to the Workers' Credit Union Studio at FATV. I'm your host, Casey Taylor. This is FCC TV. Today, we'll be looking at the uh, Fitchburg Cultural Council funded programs taking place during this season, this holiday season, um, including but not limited to uh, Santa Mail, the Winter Bazaar, and first we'll be discussing the holiday lighting of downtown Main Street. All right. So I have with me today the mayor of Fitchburg and Joan David. How are you both? Good, thanks. Good, how are you? Wonderful. Thanks, Kate. Excellent. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate well, it. Yeah. Thanks for inviting us. Um, and just jumping right in, what can you tell me about the downtown lighting of the, is it the Upper Common? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well. Go ahead, hit it, Joan. <laughs> The, main, the lighting on Main Street has been a long, long standing tradition for the city of Fitchburg. I recall being a little girl piling into my father's station wagon and driving down Main Street. And Main Street was always lit up. We had bells going across and it was, it was, yeah, uh, I remember that. It, it's been around for a long time. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. I had no idea it had been going on for so yeah. long. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Main Street Fitchburg has been, always been lit up. Excellent. Somebody said 20 years. I think it's more no, like it's 50 been more years. Than that. Um, 20 years ago, I was. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Do I we know how this started? Uh, I, it was the business district. The it more was recent, the, yeah, right now? Pride, uh, the local Pride organization. And then uh, DPW did most of the work, putting mm -hmm. up the lights and, uh, and things of that nature. And then uh, someone who was always a key person in the community, and she passed away. What are we saying, Joan? Four or five years ago, yeah, maybe. Yeah, Joanna uh, Ramos. Joanna Ramos uh, was really uh, yeah, spearheaded was that, the holiday decorating right, committee. Right. Excellent. And uh, she would have uh, volunteers. They'd go out and they'd get businesses to, uh, in different agencies, to get involved with the storefront contest. And volunteers would do arts and crafts in the uh, senior center and. Um, and when she passed away, it was, she was kind of the glue that held the committee together. And COVID was like two years later, and, and here we are. And here we are. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're going to get it done. It's going to be great. <laughs> we're more yes. successful. I mean, in terms of, I mean, the real, the real focus for this program is, is raising the money for it. Because we don't, DPW no longer takes care of that. Right. Okay. We contract it out to a company that, uh, decorates the trees, gets everything set up, puts them yeah. up, and of course takes them down. And it's yeah. a significant amount of money, but uh, yeah. we've probably raised more money. This or small group, Joan, Bill, Bill McSheehy. Well, Bill McSheehy spearheads yeah, it. Yeah, and um, uh, than ever before. I think yeah. they've raised more money now than they ever have, and yeah. Uh, yeah. to their credit. Yeah, yeah. we we get. Uh, Two thousand dollars, several one thousand dollars, five hundred, two hundred, two fifty contributions. Yeah. Right. Um, so we contract with a, a company called Christmas Decor Arsenals and Sons, and like he said, they come in and put it up and take it down. This is just the upper common, mm -hmm. and right. then we have a volunteer that does the the street poles from Blossom Street all the way down. Dennis DeGarrett. Yeah. Dennis does it. He's been doing this for years, and uh, wow. selfless guy. He's uh, he volunteers. He buys the lights. Beautiful. He puts yep. them up. Yep. Yeah. Wow, and that's all volunteer. Great guy. Yeah. Yep. There's Incredible. a lot of work. Yeah. This year we're going to add some garland to the top of the decorative poles and and a bow. So each year we'll just have to take that collar off, kind of, mm -hmm. and put it yeah. away because it's like fifty something poles when you. Well, yes. Yeah. Casey, you know the you know yeah. the uh, the uh, rotary down on Mechanic Street when I you're do. going down. How beautiful it is in the summertime. Mm -hmm. That's Dennis DeGara and, um, and Tommy others. Starr. Yeah. All right. That, that plant them, oh, maintain yeah. them. They were an absolutely fabulous job. That's and he, yeah, that's Dennis, great. part of the other part of what he does is the, uh, the street lights wow. at, uh, yeah. for holiday decorating. He's yeah. terrific, terrific asset for the city. That sounds like it. Yeah, he sounds yeah. incredible. I yeah. can't wait to meet him someday. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, so when will community members be able to enjoy the downtown holiday lighting? Well, next week, um, Christmas Decor is going to come in and start putting the lights up in all the trees at the Upper Common. Um, the day after Thanksgiving, um, Dennis is going to start working on the street posts, and we're going to start working on the garlands, getting them up there. And I just heard that the Santa mailbox will be going out the day after Thanksgiving, too, so everybody can write to Santa because he does write back. 
and th the council did fund uh, to help the post office with that. We did, yeah. Yeah, as well. So they'll see it coming. Uh, the event, we're having a holiday lighting event on December 4th, 5.30. Uh, it's a Saturday, right? Saturday, Saturday yeah. Night. yeah. The Fitchburg Band and the Stratton Players will be in Monument Park singing carols and playing right. music while we wait for Santa to come down on the fire engine. Fitchburg Fire Department will be there. Yeah. Santa will be riding. The parade? Yeah. yeah. We're gonna, it's from we're, Monument we're, up yeah, to the yeah. gazebo. We just yeah. kind of get a little yeah. parade going. Uh, we did yeah. invite the high school cheerleaders to lead the parade because they just came in first place. We haven't heard back yet. And uh, we'll parade down to the Upper Common yep. with Santa and... I, I don't know if you if you remember, yeah. but it's really well attended. I mean, there are a lot of people that come out. Yeah. The yeah. entire city does, and that's the intent. Hmm. It's to... Uh, uh, the mo more, most people we can to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would love to have just thousands of people there. and We almost make thousands, but we, <laughs> yeah. we get a good crowd. We get a good crowd. Um, Excellent, that's, that's great. And Slattery's will be there. They'll, they'll be uh, providing hot chocolate for us. Salvation Army will be there too to help the spirits for the holiday. I don't know if they'll have the truck with them or not. Finicky Fork will be handing out roasted uh, chestnuts. Oh, my uh, favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll all be outside, so. I know that you w were concerned, wondering about COVID and, and mm -hmm. mandate, and uh, with us being outside, uh, we're not going to mandate that. But if they do want to get within six feet of Santa for a picture, we, we will mandate. Ask them to put the mask. A on. mask okay. there. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But yeah. I mean, you've got to do what you got to do. We got to keep do. Santa safe, healthy right? too right. for Christmas. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and what steps is the city taking to make sure this is a culturally inclusive event? Well, well, we've always invited mm. the entire city comes out, and we're, you know, we're a, we're a tapestry as it is. So, when that, when those events happen, everyone comes out. Certainly, uh, we we make it as welcoming as we can. It's uh, always been uh, the hallmark of Fitchburg, the city of Fitchburg, and we'll continue to be that way. Awesome. Uh, and also, Fitchburg State does do a, a menorah at the former John Sonia lot. Well, they do, they do all the different uh, yeah. languages, Merry Christmas and, and different greetings and, different and stuff languages. on that lot so, too. So um, mm -hmm. It's similar to what we've got in City Hall. When you walk into the main lobby, mm -hmm. Beautiful. all the languages, welcome to, uh, to Fitchburg, all in, uh, all in uh, the different languages of the different people that are here in the city. Excellent. Well, yeah. Joan, Mayor, thank you so much for being here with me thank today. You, I very Casey. much appreciate it. Thanks thank for you. having us. All right, up next we will be having Sam Squalia and Christy Tedeschi with the Santa Mailbox program. Stay tuned. All right, we're back here with Sam Squalia and Christy Tedeschi of the Santa Mailbox program. How are you guys today? Thanks for coming. Great, thanks for having us. Doing awesome. great, <laughs> excited for the season. You're very festive, I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, you. All right, so let's jump right in. Um, Santa's Mailbox, how long has this been a program? How did this start? So about 2017, 
Uh, we got the, so in Lunenburg, in downtown Lunenburg, they have a Santa mailbox. And so I'm, uh, you know, I, I visit the, the, San, the Salvation Army in Fitchburg. I try to help them out. And Dave McDonald from the Salvation Army, he lives in Lunenburg. And he was part of the people that got the Lunenburg Santa mailbox. And he said, Sam, we need one in Fitchburg, in downtown Fitchburg. And I said, absolutely, Dave. We definitely just need a Santa mailbox. And so, uh, do, you know, do we, we, we coordinated with Dave. Dave was able to get us an old, old Santa mailbox. And uh, from there, I reached out to the community. We got uh, CJ's auto body, Shane Huntley. He's the best. And he works at CJ's auto body. And he was able to donate his time and CJ's uh, donated materials to paint the mailbox, weld it. You know, add uh, the lower the lower bo uh, the thing for the the children so that they could put the mail in. And That's awesome. Then we got D and G Custom Graphics on Lunenburg Street. They did the Santa mail graphics, and that was all donated by them. And then Shane even created the uh, the concrete base at yeah, the bottom the so that you know wow. it stays in place. Right. And uh, from there we coordinated with the DPW and the United States Postal Service and. Voila! We have a Santa mailbox for the children. Make it sound yeah, it so easy. <laughs> no problem. It does. It looks great. It I've really seen the photos. They're, they're sharp. Yeah. Yeah. We Very have nice. some photos. <laughs> um, all right. And when can residents of Fitchburg expect to see Santa's mailbox appear? The day after Thanksgiving, the DPW told us that they will pl they are planning to put it out. So the Santa mailbox should be out on the street from the day after Thanksgiving through Christmas. Uh, and uh, yeah, and when's the last time that we can put mail in the Santa mailbox for Santa to answer, Chris? So Santa has been able to answer letters that have been found in the Santa mailbox even the day of Christmas. The day of so Christmas. I mean, it's always nice when you can get them earlier than that, but Santa can make miracles happen sometimes. So. That's incredible. That's dedication, which mm -hmm. I expect. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Um, all right, let me see. Beautiful. What sort of community enhancements have you guys seen as a result of this program? Well, I know that I've seen some really breathtaking pictures of families taking their kids to the mailbox. And I mean, there was one last year that I think it was a little girl and it was snowing and like, her family got this great picture of her putting the letter in the box and the church was in the background and the snow was coming there down. Oh, oh yeah, that, that one. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can just see like on the Excellent. kids' faces how happy they are and excited they are to do it. And I think it's a really great thing for kids to experience. And people will post videos of their children Reading opening them. Santa's response. Yeah, it's and it's just the cutest thing ever. It just, <laughs> oh, that's so good. It, absolutely brings some magic it does. into this uh, really time does. of year and it's so important after the years that we've had the oh, last absolutely. couple of years I absolutely. mean this just makes all the difference <laughs> I, I completely agree sorry I lost my train of thought I was so wrapped up in this <laughs> <laughs> what sort of uh, if you have had any what sort of problems have you guys had with this project over the years and how have you counteracted them I saw that uh, Christy suggested Christy said one time someone dumped a, uh, yeah, a some thing people. of sauce. Oh, like some if they people. used it as a trash can. Yeah, some people just don't have like that spirit, I guess. I don't know. And it, but we managed to save all the letters, and we got everything wiped off, and we got everything cleaned up. Um, but yeah, yeah, I found some interesting things inside the Santa mailbox <laughs> that you would not <laughs> expect to see in there. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you for taking that. Yeah, well. <laughs> but for the most part, it's uh, it's been it's really good. pretty pretty easy going. People people enjoy it, and every year there's more and more children that choose to write a letter to Santa at, a, at our Santa mailbox. Yeah, we see. I see some coming from like New Hampshire, Worcester. Wow. Oh yeah. Um, the big thing, though, is for people to remember to put their return addresses on the letters, because I do end up finding a lot that don't have return addresses, and then it's hard for me to figure out with Santa who they go to. Or, of course. So that is very important, and it's of very course. helpful. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here with us today. I very much appreciate it. Santa's Mailbox, get ready for it. It's coming to downtown Fitchburg. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.
All right, welcome back to FCC TV. I'm your host, Casey Taylor. And now I have with me Shara Osgood, and I'm going to need some help with this. I'm so sorry. I said Iffy Berg. Iffy Berg. That's easier. <laughs> People know me that way. So. Well, thank you so much for being here. And we're here to talk about the Winter Bazaar that's happening this year, soon. soon. December 11th. Yes. From 11 to 4. Excellent. Is that a Saturday? It yes, is a Saturday. It is. Beautiful. Wait, is it Saturday or Sunday? Yes, it's Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> it, it is had a, a moment. Saturday. Check it is it Saturday. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, so can you give me a little background on the Winter Bazaar? Um, yeah, I... Yeah, go for it. Sure, okay. So um, there's been a really strongly developing arts community in Fitchburg, and when COVID happened, you know, a lot of things stopped happening. And so as things are opening up, we wanted to do more things where more artists can get together. And this was a way of bringing a lot of local artisans and regional artisans together and also a way for people to be able to come out and shop and talk to the artists making the art by one of a kind art and support local art, but also about strengthening our sense of community and connection. That's right. I think that's the most important part is the community too. The arts and Excellent. the community go together. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and what sort of community benefits, I guess you already went over this, but I mean, besides uh, being able to familiarize yourself with the artists that are working in your area, what sort of community benefits do you see coming out of this? Well, I really feel like uh, we should have a lot of people out of Fitchburg, outside of Fitchburg, further out, even all the way to Boston, if they hear about it, that would be great to come and see local artists and, uh, you know, ex you know, really see what's going on in Fitchburg because um, uh, a lot of artistic uh, things are going on and we uh, are kind of hiding and I want to be, be, have that more exposed and, yes. and we do have a lot of artists here in so this many. area. It's growing yeah, more it's and growing more every and day. It's growing and we kind of exploding. <laughs> yes, so good. it's just getting the word out to yes. the rest of the region and like she, like if he said into Boston and mm -hmm. everywhere more people we can get to come and recognize that Fitchburg is an arts community that's right like Lowell and Somerville and mm -hmm. Worcester and all of these other places that art is is a big part of the of the community I feel like it enriches so much and I agree. excellent mm -hmm. and what sort of uh, have you come across any issues or um, problems, I guess, with planning this Winter Bazaar? Uh, well, you know, we, we, we'll, we shall find out. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, that's fantastic. So far, I think the biggest <laughs> challenge is just getting the word out, getting people that's to know true. that it's happening yes. so that they'll come. Like, we have so many artisans who are participating already, and we have the beautiful newly renovated City Hall, which That's I don't right. know how many people have been there. This was leading into my gorgeous. next question. It's it beautiful. is very gorgeous. And we have three floors that we can put artists yeah. in and we will have music, we'll yes. have, we may have a storyteller, we, yeah. we're going to have all kinds of different interactive experiential yeah. things as yeah. well as all of the artists that you get to talk to and find out about how they Excellent. need their wares and you know the stories behind them and I think that that is so special. It's like right. you're not buying something on the internet that's faceless. You know the artist, and it's just priceless. I, I think it's it's really awesome because uh, you wanna. It's close to the holiday season. You wanna have something special that you're gonna shop for, and uh, you're gonna definitely find something very unique 
It's going to be unique. It's going to be made by a person, by a, by you know whoever represents this, uh, you know the 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 brand or the company, and um, you know and, and just bring a lot of a lot of community together when you know we get we get there. And it's really the space is just beautiful. I can't wait to really uh, have that experience to, you know, to see how it's going to look. It's going to be really cool. We're Excellent. also looking at possibly having uh, a few food trucks and we That's have right. Strong Style Coffee oh, will nice. be represented there and Kim will have some of her like pastries and things. So, That's right. you know, it'll be we'll a lot food. of food. Yeah, Nourishing. a lot of um, more than just shopping. It can be like an, an afternoon experience. Right. Excellent. Come All right. So. December 11th at City Hall. Mm -hmm. And what time is it again? From 11, 11 to, to four. 4. 11 to 4. Together now. 11 to 4. <laughs> and there is Excellent. parking behind City Hall. I don't know how many people know that, but there is a parking well, lot. I know that now. Yeah. That's, yes. I didn't know that before. So. That's yeah, great. and it's very easy to go around. It's close to walk there. Excellent. Um, and there is the downtown lot that's open. And if we have Beautiful. food trucks, they'll probably be in that parking lot, too. Mm -hmm. So Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I want to thank you both so much for being here with me today. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for Again, having us. Again, Effie Berg and Shara Osgood with the Winter Bazaar. That's happening December 11th at City Hall. <laughs> back to FCC TV. I'm your host Casey Taylor and now we are with Noel Pluff, Elizabeth, Hor say it again, sorry, Horman, <laughs> Horman and Bill Horman. Excellent. Thank you. With the Thorsten Consort and how are you guys today? Very well. Fantastic. Excellent. Fantastic. Excellent. Very well. That's great. <laughs> All right. We're going to jump right in. What can you tell me about the history of the Thorsten Consort? How did this start? Well, the Thorsten Consort of its first iteration was in 2019. We did our, uh, what was called the inaugural concert over at uh, uh, Phillips Hall, and then came COVID. Yes. And then um, we were out of business, our musicians changed, but then we built up, uh, we, we, we built up more musicians, and we did our first concert. In fact, you saw that it was just playing. We did a, Fourth of July uh, video, and shortly we'll be on the um, uh, uh, Historical Society's program, doing composers of Fitchburg. Oh, that's very cool! Right, and, and we put it onto a CD, and we'll be at the um, Christmas Bazaar there at City Hall, Hocken <laughs> <laughs> CDs. <laughs> that's excellent. And what does a typical year, I guess? There wouldn't really be a typical year yet. Yeah, you anticipated huh. that answer. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, COVID had a profound effect on the So performance. what would your ideal typical year look like for the Thurston Consort? Well, next year we're planning uh, four concerts. Uh, the only one we've got uh, um, arrangements made for is doing early music, talking about early Baroque, pre-Baroque, music composers such as uh, Henry Purcell or, um, or Monteverdi, Claudio Monteverdi, th that sort of uh, repertoire. And we're expecting that on the first the week of May. We'd like to do a concert uh, before that late winter, um, but that still hasn't been worked out. But four concerts is what we're planning on. Excellent, okay. Yeah. And what can you tell me about the concert that is coming up soonest? It's a winter concert, is that correct? Yeah, I would is call it Washington that. Is this Washington Irvin, Washington Irvin sketchbook? Yes. Yes. You are correct. My colleagues here have been working on the uh, on, on the script. If uh, if they have anything to add to. Well, I think Washington Irving is a really interesting writer because it's not a writer that people read any longer. 
I mean, everybody knows the story of Sleepy Hollow or Rip Van Winkle, but have they read Washington Irving's original writing of that? And the answer is probably no. But um, the sketchbook is really interesting because the descriptions it has of the Christmas celebrations is very rich and it's language rich as people in that time period wrote in that manner. And I think that the interesting thing is that, is that it gives you the most vivid picture of exactly what the writer is talking about, which really um, enlivens the whole season. Beautiful, excellent. And where and when can, yes? There's one other point about the concert is we're doing the, uh, the, the script of Washington Irving, but the music is, is also just absolutely fascinating because the concert, for the most part, is going to be 18th century New England composers, which, you know, it comes to a surprise to, to many mm -hmm. people. William Billings out of Boston is probably the best known, but there aren't too many people who know Jeremiah Engels from Vermont, but all of these are just amazing works of uh, music. And these individuals, they, they didn't have any formal training. This is all self-taught compositions. It's gonna be marvelous to listen to. That sounds incredible. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So when can, how can residents take part in this? Because of COVID. It has impact um, the performing arts <laughs> oh, more than incredible. anyone else. FATV was gracious enough to broadcast, or what I say, cable cast, cable cast our our, um, our our Fourth of July concert, which we had just seen, and then our other concert, which we did, is going to be on, as I said, the Historical Society's program, and this program as well will be on FATV, a date and time to be announced when when we're finished in the studio. <laughs> Beautiful, I look forward to it. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Bill, Noel, and Elizabeth with the Thurston Consort. Thank you so much. All right, and I would like to thank also everyone who was on our show with us today at FCC TV. The Mayor, Joan David, Sam Squalia, Christy Tedeschi with Santa Mail, and the uh, Fitchburg Cultural Council's friends, Ify and Chara Osgood with the Winter Bazaar. Thank you so much.